Can you imagine, having just built the longest tunnel in the world, you then open your front door one evening and you're shot five times. What? Yep, and your wife is also shot once. That's just crazy. Yep, that and a little bit more in today's video. Also, today's video is kindly brought to you by the good people at NordVPN. More on that also at the end of the video. In 1886, the Seven Tunnel opened under the Seven. Now, it's four miles long, two miles of which is underwater. And until the Channel Tunnel came along, it was probably one of the longest underwater tunnels in the world at the time. It took a staggering 13 years to build from the time that its first sod was cut until somebody sat on the train and went for it as a passenger. Now, many of you watching the video today would have probably been on that route. And it would be for me to say that this was an amazing feat of engineering, it was the first time it was ever attempted. But that wasn't the case. And of course it was an amazing feat of engineering. But imagine trying that 80 years prior to that time. That's exactly what happened in the early 1800s. Now, the coal reserves of South Wales and the Forest of Dean were being fully exploited in the early 1800s and subsequently one of the earliest tram roads was built. It connected Cinderford to Bullow Pill down on the coast of the Severn. And subsequently, the Bullow Pill tram road was born and it would take its traffic down to Bullow Pill and on, on the Severn and the coal would then be taken by seven troves wherever the demand met. Now one of the unique features of the Bullow Pill tram road was a significant hill about a mile inland and a man called Roger Tipping was tasked with building a tunnel under that hill. He built what was called the Hay Tunnel and it just turned out that it was the longest tunnel in the world at the time. Following on from the success of this tunnel and the subsequent tram road, it was decided that a seven crossing would be desirable. And subsequently, Roger Tipping and his team of miners were once again chosen to build another tunnel. This time with some slight differences. Before a shovel or a pickaxe had been lifted, there was already plans in place for the tolls, for walkers, for mules, horses, all sorts of livestock alike. There was even a watering hole at each end, ready to take on the newfound business that this tunnel would bring. What could possibly go wrong? Work began in haste, and by mid-1811, it was reported that things were progressing rapidly and there was every chance of success. Now, by early 1812, the Red Lion at Arlington had placed an advert in the Gloucester Journal suggesting that they'd already reached halfway across the River Severn. That's around about 500 yards. Clearly, they were excited about the business that this tunnel was going to bring them. Unfortunately, all that was about to come to an end. Friday the 13th, November 1812. Some miners at the front face of the tunnel reported what they thought was a small breach. It didn't, however, turn out to be that small at all. And eventually they had run out of the tunnel to the western end, barely escaping with their lives. Now, such was the inadequateness of the pumps at the time, they couldn't take the water out that it breached, and unfortunately, to this day, it was left abandoned. It wouldn't be attempted again for another half a century. Hold on a second, surely there's more to this story. You said earlier on about shootings. Yes, exactly. Now, back in 2006, a man called Keith Walker did a load of research on this original tunnel project. He went to record offices, did in-depth research over the period of months, he wrote articles, and he found some really quirky things. What Keith found next in his research was undoubtedly the most unexpected part of the project yet. So on January the 30th, 1815, sort of two and a half, two, two and a half years after the failure of the tunnel, Roger Tipping was shot at his doorstep. Keith Walker found out that Mr. Roger Tipping, after the failure of the Seven Tunnel, he was known as just a miner of Newham. He wasn't famous in any way, shape or form, despite the fact that he built the longest tunnel in the world five years previous. That goes to show that you only ever remember the last thing you do. 
Absolutely right. Now, one of the other things that Roger Tipping discovered was the amount of money at the time they invested was £20,000. Now, we assume that's not a great deal of money, but 205 years ago, £20,000 was probably a vast amount of money. Now, you imagine all the investment of the people and the potential success that they'd have got had this been a complete and utter wonderful tunnel that had completed and brought them all their, all their wealth and success from their investment. Well, it would probably do the exact opposite upon its failure. If you enjoyed today's little railway story, please do consider signing up to today's sponsor, which is NordVPN. The link's in the doobly-doo below, and you can get yourself a 68% discount on a two-year plan, which is only £2.68 a month. With a 30-day money-back guarantee. When we talk about the benefits of NordVPN, we often mention things like a secure internet where all your data stays behind a wall of next generation encryptment, the privacy you get from the encryption on your mobile device and masking your IP when you're browsing so that details can't be tracked. You know, a bit like when you Google something and then any site you go thereafter shoves an advert in your face of the thing you've just Googled. For us, the thing we like to talk about the most is the thing that's probably most useful to us. Because NordVPN has over 5,000 servers worldwide, you can literally hop onto any of those servers in over 50 countries and enjoy the internet with no border. So basically, if there's something that you want to watch on Netflix that is only in the US, we can just hop onto a US server and watch it from the UK. The same goes for sports events, for example, that you might not be able to watch in the country you reside in right now. And again with Nord, no issue. The list of benefits goes on, and you can check out those benefits in the link in the description below. But before you sign up, make sure you use the coupon code the WhiteWix at checkout to ensure you get your discount. So, from the the embankment that is the Didcot Newbury and Southampton Railway, um, we bid you farewell. We hope you enjoyed the short story. Do um, click on the link below and sign up to Nord if you haven't done that already. That would help out the channel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, big thanks to Nord for sponsoring this video. We'll see you next time. Rebecca, it hasn't escaped my attention. Your hand keeps going in your pocket and then in your mouth. And I'm not um, reveling in the delights of whatever is rebels. in your, your pocket. i finished them now. Really? They're just M&Ms. M&Ms? There's lots of the left of what the kids left me anyway. Rude. <laughs>